Hello and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Today I have a video that I've been wanting to do and it is just a roundup of all my black inks. And I have been doing some watercoloring and sketching with ink and sometimes the ink is just kind of running into my watercolors, which I don't mind so much, but I really wanted to just go through and check and see which of my inks, even though they say they're waterproof or bulletproof, which ones truly are um, showing up that way. So this is that video. So today I have just literally grabbed all the inks that I've had in my collection that I've purchased myself. And um, I have Noodler's um, Eel Black, and I actually have not used this ever. I've had it several years now. I've kind of been afraid to use it, uh, but I'll, I'll go into that in just a minute. Um, I have the Birmingham Pen Company. I have Black Olive, which I've actually done a review on before. I'll put the link down there. I have Aurora Black, which I love this bottle, it's so pretty. And I have, actually I have the new, the, another Noodler's here, it's just Noodler's Black, which is often compared to the Eel. I also have my favorite, which is Heart of Darkness. Just wanna see how that compares, because I, I really tend to favor that over everything else. And uh, I have a review on that one as well, so I can post the link for that. Okay, now I'm out of order. Eel, Noodler, Noodler's Black, Heart of Darkness, Birmingham Pen Company, Aurora. I have a Diamine Blue Black, but I don't think I'm going to use that in this one just because I want to keep it all just straight black. I already know Diamine are highly saturated, gorgeous inks, but you normally don't want to just draw with... I mean, you can draw with them, just don't watercolor with them because they are not water resistant at all. So they kind of dissolve in water, so it's not gonna matter anyway. And then the last one I have is the Waterman Black, which is a really nice um, kind of everyday black, if you will, kind of like a little black dress. So I have all these inks, I have my water, I have some uh, swabs, then I have a bunch of paper. And actually, one of the things I want to do in another video, so just wait, there's going to be another one. Um, this is watercolor paper, 300 GSM, and I'm going to actually use it on with water on watercolor papers to see how that translates over. But that's going to be another video coming up. And then uh, for today, though, I'm going to start with the worst paper, which is just a... A legal pad so it's one that I test um, just when I do pen reviews I've got all my pen reviews on here so we're just going to use you know just like binder paper so we're going to use that and then I have a pad that the pelican hubs gave me last year and I believe when I kind of not measured it because you can't figure that out but the way that the paper feels it's like 32 pound paper so I'm just going to use the pelican pad and call it equivalent to 32 pound paper and then I have a, a rhodia dot pad I will use that not also I use that for my ink tests on pens and then I I uh, usually reserve this one for my in-depth reviews, um, and this is a endless recorder with the Tomoe River paper so that you can see the color and the sheen and the shine. This is my Diamine Earl Grey review. So anyway, uh, so I'm going to use that. I'm not going to do it the same way. I do just one ink at a time, so I'm going to actually use the back, and I kind of started an ink journal back here, but that just kind of died. So I'm going to just flip back here and uh, just do some swabs also of ink so that it goes on this paper as well. So a lot of different inks, a lot of different papers, a lot of different um, ways to take a look at this. So just, just uh, bear with me. And you know what? I'm going to grab, instead of the legal pad, I'm going to grab a binder paper so that you can see, and a copy, I think I'll grab a copy paper. Okay, hang on, I'll be right back. So I have a sheet of 
just spiral bound notebook paper complete with the spirals uh, yanked out and then also just copy paper. What I'm going to do, uh, the reason why I decided to do this instead of the legal pad is so that I can actually submerge these in water and just kind of see what happens as well. So let's get started. All right, the first up is the Noodler's Eel. And this is black and I'm going to just do a swab. And I went ahead and just kind of put on here what I'm using. Oh boy, that is really light. So this is my second, that's my first go. This is my second and then this is my third. So we'll go like that. And that is just on regular binder paper. And let me do that again. So this is my first go around, my second and my third. Let's see there. Copy paper. And then on my Pelican paper, which I'm not positive, but again, I'm gonna assume it's like 32 pound paper, which actually feels like that as well. Second and then third. And then this one is going to be first. I did not dip it. Okay, that's okay. Second and third. Okay, so there's that. And then as these are drying, which um, eel does not dry all that well, we will just kind of see how this goes here first second, third. All right, so from what I understood from someone um, who has done this review before, the eel can take upwards of eight days to dry, and I think that's from Mountain of Ink or Well-Appointed Desk. I don't remember now, but that is really the reason why I have been scared to use the eel. And the eel on Noodler's own site, I'm gonna jot these down, is a lubricated uh, black ink. Noodler's black eel. And it's supposed to be bulletproof and archival and, oops, black eel, Noodler's. So just bear with me while I write all these things down. Okay, and this one as well. So what is a lubricated ink, you might be asking, and why is it lubricated? Um, it is, and the reason why I bought it is because it is a um, ink that you can put into your pens that are running a little dry that just might need a little help. Maybe you let ink dry in there. Oh, that's awful. Um, I'm sorry, I can't write and talk at the same time, apparently. There we go. So it's ink that... Um, sometimes your pens, you've let ink dry in there and it's, they're just writing hard. They're having hard starts, all that kind of stuff. That is actually an eel, um, an eel. It is actually an ink you can put inside your pen. And I believe it has something like glycerin in there that will actually literally lubricate your ink, your, um, pens, your fountain pens. It doesn't harm the fountain pen at all. You don't want to leave it in there. You want to change that out after you're done, you know, writing um, maybe a page or so. But really, it's to kind of get the, the flow going and um, having it feel better. So I've been talking for quite a bit. I don't know if you can tell. It's still wet on the Tomoe River. And uh, so that's kind of a problem. I'm going to see if it's yeah, it's still wet on the dot pad. Yep, and it is completely dry on the other paper. So there we go. Okay, so that was uh, Black Eel. Let's do now the Noodler's Black. So let's swap that. I'm trying to go in order here. 
does it matter? I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter anymore that now that I have them kind of written out. Let me go out a little bit. This is kind of tricky because there's not much room to work here. And I got to get all these to kind of match up so you can see. All right. So let's go with Noodler's Black. Another bulletproof archival ink that is supposed to really be... Um, kind of water, not waterproof, but water resistant. And already it looks a little bit darker than the eel, which is kind of interesting. I thought the eel was pretty, supposed to be pretty black and dark, but what do I know? That's why I'm doing this, because I don't really know. And I've been using some of my inks. So it's just kind of, See that, so there's that one, that's number two. All right, so let me get this again, my dip pen. And I'm gonna write this and then I'll be right back. Okay, so there's how all of these kind of look. And uh, let's see, I just got done writing so this, no, it's still wet. And this, I'm not even gonna touch because both of these are still wet. So it's been another probably minute or so. So that's going on two minutes now, I'm not drying. This is about a minute now and not drying on the Tomoe River. So the better your fountain pen paper, the worse your drying time. The copy paper seems to be dry like really quickly all right so let's move on to the next one and that is heart of darkness swakes there okay where did my dip go there it is and i love that it comes with a eyedropper so i use it to fill up my uh, Charlie pen. Oh, whoops. I'm supposed to be swabbing. Just getting to talking on this. All right, let's do that first. One, two, three. One, two, and three. One, two, three, one. Oops, that's two and three. Okay, and... Did Tomoe River off camera, but I'm gonna bring it on camera because I went way down here, but that's okay. HOD uh, for Heart of Darkness. In my effort to speed things along, I went ahead and wrote out the next one, which is Birmingham Olive black olive, and I realized that when I submerge the papers into water, um, I may not know what's what. So I may just do the binder paper and the copy paper in water and just kind of see the steadfastness of it and see how we go. So that's my plan. That way I don't have to put the other papers in because we kind of can figure it out if they're, if they're, um, hanging tight on poor paper, chances are they'll be good on regular paper. So whoopsies, let me do that here. Very light on here, I don't know if you can tell. Oh, hey, it's still not dry, uh, the eel. The um, Noodler's Black is also just kinda hanging out for a bit here. So taking forever to dry. All of these others, the Heart of Darkness is dry. And let's see, are those dry? Yep, they're dry on the dot pad as well. All right, so let's move on to the next one. And it is Aurora, Aurora Black, easy for you to say. I'm just gonna write this one quickly because it's just one Aurora. Oh, 
Okay. Whoops. I appreciate you hanging out with me though today because uh, I am getting ready to do some more water coloring. And really, I wanted to do this ink sampling before I did my water coloring because uh, I need to figure out what fountain pens I can use uh, to doodle. So this is really for me. Okay, there's that. And it looks like these are pretty well dry. No, this is yeah, a little bit wet on the, oops, multiple side. And let me... I didn't even write it over here. What am I doing? Okay. I can write that one right now. And if you want, you can take a look and see the blacks are looking... Well, they're looking black. Uh, the Aurora looks beautiful written out with the dip pen, which is kind of like a medium nib. And so I should probably mark that as well um, on my uh, Tomoe so that I have a record of what I used. And when I go back, I can kind of look at that. And now we're going to use the Waterman. And then we'll um, do a water test on all of these and see how that goes. So let's see. Waterman. And before I do a water test, I'm going to just uh, also share uh, what, you know, how much feathering there is and um, all of those things as well. So I'm going to also just write glass dip pen and then swab test. Um, one pass, two, and three. All right, so that way I can remember what I did because of just completely forgetting. All right, so here's this one. That kind of almost has bluish or grayish undertones, it looks like to me. But we'll see. Well, that's really pretty black. No wonder everybody likes it. Okay, and then the last one is here. Okay, so I'm doing this in the daylight, so hopefully you can see pretty well what's going on here. The black eel and the noodler's black actually have some brownish undertones, as does Heart of Darkness. The Birmingham has kind of a grayish, whereas Aurora and Waterman are actually a pretty nice black. But again, don't know how this is going to pan out for doing watercolors and water resistance um so we'll see um, how that goes and then here's the way it looks on just uh, regular bad paper so there is a little bit of spreading you can see it with the noodlers black eel it's spreading this is not that is not Birmingham is a little Aurora, definitely, and Waterman, definitely. So that's going to indicate they're just a little bit more wetter inks uh, because they're just kind of saturating into the paper. This is copy paper, so let's take a look at that. The blacks look fairly uniform, actually. Um, Birmingham olive is looking dark, which is weird because it's not that dark of an ink. Aurora is... From my viewpoint, Aurora and Waterman look the darkest. These have, again, brownish undertones. And as far as uh, spreading while riding the Noodlers, Heart of Darkness, Aurora and Waterman all are showing a little bit of that. Uh, you know, they have X Feather. And also there's Platinum Carbon 
black and so I really want to try those as well but I just didn't want to spend any money right now to I just want to see what I have and utilize it that way all right on this you can see a little better on the undertones and those are again a little bit of brownish for the noodlers um, the Birmingham olive looks good and Aurora and Waterman is the darkest so don't know if you can see that I hope you can and then Rhodia dot pad and that is looking just as consistent as the other one so let's put some water on this and see uh, what that looks like so do I dare put water on this well, I don't really want to. All right, so I'm going to, I really want to submerge the these two, but you know what? For just starters, because I'll end up putting, um, submerging them, I'm just going to do this. And that is just put a line of water to see what happens. All right, and I think we will do that. Should we do it here? Let's um, let's do it to the dot pad. Well, you know what? I, I don't really care. Let's do it here too. Let's see. Where's my water dropper? There's one. And there's the other. Okay, so we have water that is sitting and I am going to just dab this and not let it kind of fall out. Can't really tell out of this, can ya? And I didn't really write anything, so maybe maybe I should be doing it over here on some of these. But again, we'll put it underwater and I will um, stay tuned to the end and I'll have pictures for you. How's that? That way you can tell what's going on. Let's just dab that. These are looking pretty good. The olive is spreading a little. This one is definitely um, giving way. The Aurora black is holding firm. These, it doesn't even look like I did anything. They still have water sitting on them. Look, the water drops just kind of, nothing has happened to the noodlers and now it's going into the writing. Look, I can even smear it. <laughs> okay, that's on copy paper, so it's not budging. That is great. All right, let's see over here. Is it giving up any kind of ink? It's looking like this is spreading, this is spreading, this is spreading, this is not budging at all. And um, let's see. Uh, what I can do is, because I use paint brushes for um, doing watercolors, I can actually, let's see if that will give. That gives a little bit. Rinse that so I'm not moving one into the other. Is that giving some color? A little. And this one? No, not really. Well, uh, whoops, I just moved the other ones along with it. That was bad. Bad scientific way to do it. So that is, those are not true moving uh, especially for the heart of darkness that didn't move at all so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to go and submerge these and take photocop i mean take photocopies take pictures of them and then place them at the end so if you will let me know what you think which one would you use what which black appeals to you best and uh what kind of paper do you use so just give me some comments and let me know what you think until next just time decided to go ahead and add the results of the immersion test so this is the binder paper and aurora is looking um pretty good waterman is blue and you can see the undertones of the other colors as well that's the copy paper this is the pelican paper and you can see the birmingham aurora and waterman have moved but you can still see them but on the rhodia yeah, they disappeared, but Noodlers holds strong. So I'd say out of these, you decide which one you like best.